Hello everybody and welcome back or welcome if you're new here to my channel. I have this sketchbook, this one right here, and I have a couple of pages left. To be precise, I have one, two, three, I have four pages left here and I did not draw anything or paint anything on the first page. In total, I have six pages left in this sketchbook. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna finish it. Will we finish it today? Probably not. In the past, I would have said today is the day that we finish this sketchbook, but I've grown wiser and I know that it's not gonna happen. But today is the day that we start working on this project of finishing the sketchbook and that we commit to it. So this is what I'll be working on in the next few days and weeks, weeks. I don't know how long it's gonna take to be honest. It could be quite fast, it could be quite long. I don't know, impossible to tell. But for you, this is all gonna happen in the next 30 minutes. So we can say that it's gonna take about 30 minutes. My plan for these last few pages is I want to paint a landscape. I would like to paint a still life and I would like to do some Skillshare classes. My goal is to pick some Skillshare classes that will make me learn some new techniques that I can then incorporate into my art. Six pages is not a lot, so let's start working. Oh, but first I need to finish this collage. It's not going to take too long, I think. See, we're already starting with a delay. Oh well. This is the collage in question. I have already stuck all of this together and now I just need to position my artwork on this paper, stick it, add this little part here and stick the snake on top and then it will be finished. So let's do that first. So this is the final result. I am pretty pleased with this. For a first collage, I think it's pretty good. I like the fact that it's like a, an abstract landscape. It looks like a house on a coastal town or something like that. I like the elements of nature, the birds. I have hidden a couple of birds and the snake. And yeah, I like it. I just think if I had to redo it, I would take more time 
to place it because I think it's a little bit crooked, but to be honest, I'm just gonna leave it as is. So now I'm trying to think about ways in which I could incorporate some collage in my art and my abstract paintings. So we'll see if it happens. Maybe I'm gonna do a little test at some point. Now sketchbook stuff. So one hot afternoon, I decided to go to the park and bring my... I think I brought some paint, but I also brought my pencils. In the end, I only used my color pencils. And I drew some scenes from the park. I got inspired by two artists that I've been watching a lot lately, which are Sandy Hester and Melanie Chadwick. The both of them do plein air painting and drawing a lot. So every time I watch their videos, they're so relaxing, first of all. And I see them work and I see how amazing what they do is. I was very inspired. Also, I did not do a literal recreation of the landscapes that I saw in front of me. I just took some, some things that I like, put them on paper and omitted things that I thought did not serve the drawing. This is something that I've been doing more and more lately allowing myself to modify my art and not be so literal about it. Before, what I would do is that, for example, at the park, if I see a garbage bin or if there's some people or if there is a basketball court or something, then I'm gonna have to include it in my drawing because I'm drawing what I see and this is what I see. But this time around, I decided not to draw these things that I thought were not useful. Who cares if it's not recognizable as this specific park? And then I ended up with a couple of drawings that I later used to create this painting that I'm doing right now. This, this is the first time that I've used acrylic in my sketchbook. I do not know why I waited this long before using them because it was amazing. I think maybe I just forgot that acrylics were an option. I have no idea, but I loved my experience with acrylics so much. Then after this, I think I did a couple more paintings with acrylics, you'll see soon. But wow, the thing that changed my life with acrylics is when I discovered the retardant medium. Before I thought that acrylics, it just dried too fast and I couldn't blend the colors like I would with other mediums directly on the painting and I don't know, it was just, it was hard to use and hard to achieve a look that I wanted but since I've been using retardant and since I've been looser, you can really see that in this painting right now, it's a lot looser than some stuff that I, I've used to do before, especially with acrylics, since I've been doing that changed everything and now I like using acrylics so so much.
decided to follow a class on Skillshare. I wanted to find some classes that would teach me some techniques that I could then incorporate into my own art. So for this class we were painting Australian landscapes using watercolors and we were using a lot of wet on wet techniques. Usually in the past my landscapes have been quite tight so I wanted to learn how to be looser with them and also maybe use a little bit more abstraction in them. Then I decided that I had to paint my son again. So this is my cat. I thought about all the things that would be essential for me to incorporate or at least that would be fun for me to incorporate in each of my sketchbook going forward. And one of them is a self-portrait, which I did earlier. And another one of them would be a portrait of my son. What I didn't realize is that I already had a drawing of him, but it's not as nice as this one. So I decided to use acrylic once again, try to do a looser style once again. And I decided to use a color palette that was not very natural just to give myself a little challenge and to stylize this piece a little bit more you'll see towards the end that the lighting changed I think it started raining or it got dark quite suddenly so that's why the color is a little bit bluer towards the end but you don't care do you This is the last page of my sketchbook but this is not the last page that I painted because there were other pages throughout the sketchbooks that I had left blank or that I wanted to cover up so I did some stuff after this one but this is the last painting that I'm going to see when I flip through my sketchbook and I wanted it to be something significant. I thought that another thing that I really needed in every sketchbook going forward was a still life. I got inspired once again by the amazingly talented Sandy Esther. She does a lot of still lifes as well and she gathers a lot of stuff that she owns. Sometimes she even buys some stuff just because she's like, oh, this would be nice in a, in a still life. So I went through my house, I gathered some stuff, I went through my fridge, I took some fruits and I created a little still life composition on my desk which I recreated semi-literally, well, not exactly literally. So you see that there's a vase quite right in the middle and then to its right, there's a flower pot, it's gonna be pink and there's a beautiful plant with big leaves in it. Um, in fact, this was two different objects. So I had this this container that was pink that had nothing in it and I had this plant that I kind of placed on the side but I decided that in this painting it would be so pretty if the plant was in this specific pot so that's what I did and nobody knows except you <laughs> also I decided to use gouache gouache is the first medium that I used in this sketchbook it's not on the first page but it's the first painting that I created and I remember it was my first time using gouache at all and it was so difficult, I struggled so much and I remember that at some point I thought maybe gouache just wasn't for me and since then I used it so many times, I, dis I really discovered gouache throughout this sketchbook and I find it so interesting that I chose to do gouache for this final piece. I did not even think about that when I decided to paint this painting, but now that I think about it, I realize that the first and last painting that I ever did in this sketchbook were using gouache. It makes me so happy. Another thing worth mentioning about this painting is that it was one of my first still lives, I think, using one of my own composition. 
And I loved this experience so, so much. I really want to do more. I want to do bigger sizes. And it's just lighted a spark in me that I can't wait to explore more. Thank you.
When I first started my sketchbook, I was quite intimidated because this was the first real sketchbook in my artist career, artist practice. <laughs> the sketchbook I finished before this one was a sketchbook that I started maybe 10 years ago that I did not take that seriously. I did not work actively in it. And so this it did not have this added pressure of creating something pretty or anything like that. If you want to see a sketchbook tour of that one, I'm going to link it up there so you can watch it. So I started this sketchbook after I finished my first unofficial sketchbook. And then I felt the pressure of creating a beautiful first page and it was too much for me. So what I did is that I skipped the first page, both sides, and I started working from the second page. So this is the first two pages of the sketchbook. I decided that I had to paint something and I wanted to follow another Skillshare class. In fact, I followed two, one for each page, where I would explore a bit more with abstract watercolor techniques, which is something that I would hopefully be able to incorporate into my art. So I had lots of fun. Uh, this is not something that I would have done a year ago when I started my sketchbook, I had no interest in abstract art at this point. So it's funny to see that the first two pages are abstract paintings. It's kind of a reverse evolution. It's kind of like a foresight. I don't know if it's, it's the right term, but when you see the first two pages, you kind of get an idea of where I'm going to head during my journey. So for me, it's a fun little fact to know in my sketchbook when you know me. So now you know. In the second page, I selected another abstract class in Skillshare and I played a lot with colors that I found interesting. So I think that this color palette, I'm going to try to use in one of my own paintings because it's really pretty. I based it on a picture that I saw on Pinterest, I think, or Instagram. So I kind of had some fun recreating some colors and then I created my own compositions with this color palette.
When I first talked to you about this project, I told you I had six pages left to do, but I forgot about this one. When I created this portrait, this is me, I used this page as like a swatch page. I thought I could do something pretty on this side and it turns out not really. <laughs> I'm gonna paint a landscape using acrylics on top of this. So it's gonna cover, sorry. So it's gonna cover all of this nicely and then we're gonna be done. So let's do it. Another thing I've been having a lot of fun with, especially with my acrylic paintings and also with my gouache paintings, is selecting an underpainting color. I like to think about what color I want to show through my painting because I leave some areas a bit more transparent. So I like to have a peak of color from time to time and I want to select a color that will indicate the general mood of the image. So in my last landscape that you saw me paint with acrylics, one of the first painting of this video, I selected a bright red underpainting because it was a bright sunset. The colors were very intense and it showed through a little bit and it was very pretty. And for this one, it's a lot moodier. It was like a gray day. There was not a lot of sun. The colors are a bit more muted. So that's why I decided to choose this grayish blue. I also made a conscious effort of keeping a loose style and overall I'm really in love with this painting. This painting is based on a picture that I took while on vacation and when I saw this landscape with this weird shaped house I just knew that one day I would paint it. I did not know when but this was the time. I was scrolling through my pictures, I saw this one and I was like, yes, yes, this is it. It's true, I just can't deny 
So we finished this sketchbook finally. So let me show you in order the pages that I created. First, I did these sketches at the park and then I created this painting based on this sketch right here. Then I had fun with some Skillshare classes in one of which we created this painting using wet on wet techniques. Then I painted my son, <laughs> so cute. And I did a still life and that was so much fun, really. I really wanna do more. And then I had two pages at the beginning that I did not paint, so I painted two abstract paintings. Oh, and I also had one random page in the middle that only had like blobs of colors. Let me find it. It's ah, right here. And I decided to cover them up using acrylics. So that's it. If you want to see the sketchbook tour, it's going to be coming up really shortly. So I won't be talking about my sketchbook any longer. If you want all the details, just check out my sketchbook tour. It's going to be up. Yeah, pretty soon. So if you like this video, please leave a like, please leave a comment and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel. I try to post art videos whenever I can. I aim for once a week, but it's not always what happens. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you soon. Bye.